What a time to be alive in 2024 when we would have so much Beatles news. Not only in recent months have we gotten a new song, but Paul McCartney has been reunited with his famous long lost Hofner 501 violin bass. I do own a Hofner bass, so that makes this video much more interesting. This is my Hofner B bass high series. <laughs> I don't really play the bass that much, to be honest. I'm more of a guitar player who plays bass, so a lot of you will know what that means. <laughs> if ever a guitar player says to you that they play a little bit of bass, that's exactly what I am. Hello everyone and you're very welcome back to another video. My name is Amy, I'm a musician, I play guitar and I sing and I make videos that consist mostly of cover songs, guitar content, vlogs and I also just really enjoy talking about music and music related things. So in today's video we're going to be discussing the breaking news in the music world last week. The iconic Hofner bass guitar that was stolen over 50 years ago belonging to Paul McCartney has been located and returned to him. For a band that broke up over 50 years ago and with two members no longer with us, they sure are still hanging around, which speaking for myself as a fan makes me very happy. This story is so insane and the fact that it's been returned after all this time is actually crazy. At least I think so. I think most of us assumed that no one was going to see this bass ever again considering its value and arguably it's the most famous bass guitar in the world but here we are in 2024 it's been found it's back to where it once belonged and speaking for myself i'm happy about that my faith in humanity has been restored for the time being. So I wake up in the morning of Thursday, February 15th, 2024. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I do what I do every morning. I pull myself out of bed and I go put the kettle on. I grab my phone, open up Instagram to check in on my online world. And the very first thing that I see is a post from Hofner Guitars because I follow them. The large red text catches my eye and it reads, breaking news, the lost bass is back where it belongs. The lost bass project is thrilled to tell you that Paul's 1961 bass is back with him after more than 51 years. More news and the whole story to follow, including a photo of the bass itself and the caption on the post reads, maybe the biggest news in music for years. Paul McCartney's last 1961 Hofner bass missing for 51 years is back with Paul. The last bass project will soon be breaking the whole story and we will let you know here how to read it. Probably not what you expect. My first thought that I had, I'll admit, <laughs> actually turned out to be a complete false memory once I realized. But the first thing that came into my mind was, wasn't that bass found at one point in like a German castle? And I was racking my brain. I was like, why did that thought pop into my head? I don't know where that came from. Is that factually true? Like, why Why did I think about that first? So I started doing a little bit of reading about this whole thing because once I saw this story, I knew I wanted to make a video about it. And I could not find any mention of a German castle anywhere. So I was thinking, what? Where did I come up with that? Until I came across a YouTube video that Paul McCartney did for Wired, the video called Paul McCartney McCartney answers the web's most searched questions. And in that video, this is what he said. I had two, but one got stolen and we still don't know where it is. Just somewhere along the way, the one I was using uh, just vanished. We've no idea where it went, but the one I'm using is one of the originals. It's one that I've used for a long time. It is interesting though to think where did that one go? Because no one can bring it out because everyone knows it's mine. They've got pictures of it. So my theory is, and it's kind of half fantasy, but it's that you go to some German castle way in the hills of Bavaria and you'll have dinner. And then the host will say, come, let me show you something. And you go up into this little room and there's my base over his mantelpiece. It could be just a fantasy. So rewatching that clip, I was like, ah, that's where I got that. But going back to the Lost Bass Project, uh, <laughs> it reminds me of the Kyle Gass Project. <laughs> For the KGP. The what? Kyle Gass Project. 
Oh, right. But going back to the Lost Base project, I'll admit I actually had no idea that this was a thing. I didn't know about the website or anything. Yes, I am a Beatles fan. However, I don't keep up with absolutely everything. But I was aware of the story about the base that was stolen all those years ago. And this is what prompted me to go and check out thelostbase.com, which I will link in the description, but I'm sure any of you watching this video, you're probably well aware of this story. So you've probably seen the website already, but just in case you haven't, I will pop it in the description. So please do check out the website if you are curious at all. Sure enough, the website had an updated front page, the last base found. So before I get into the story of how the base was found, I want to go back a little bit and tell you about the history of this particular instrument. This story goes back to 1961, the early days of the Beatles. They accept a residency gig for a couple of months in the top 10 club in Hamburg, Germany. The Beatles' first bass player, Stuart Sutcliffe, has just left the band, so guitar and piano player Paul McCartney takes over the role of bass player. But at the time, he didn't own a bass guitar so he takes himself to the local Steinway music shop in Hamburg to purchase one. Steinway, as we know today, are a top piano manufacturer and they were back then too, but they did also have some music shops and Hofner was one of the brands that they carried. As the story goes, Paul was drawn to the Hofner for a couple of reasons. He liked the look of it and since it has cutaways on both sides and with him being left-handed, he thought he could play it upside down and it would still work for him, although a proper left-handed bass was ordered for him. He was also drawn to the price. It was a pretty inexpensive purchase at the time, with the Hofner bases retailing at around £30. At the time, Paul couldn't afford any of the Fender models, which would have been more popular. Paul would play this Hofner 501 bass religiously for about two years. It is the bass that can be heard on the first two Beatles albums, Please Please Me and With the Beatles. And the first few singles, Love Me Do, Please Please Me, From Me to You and She Loves You. Literally, anything the Beatles did prior to 1963. In late 1963, Paul acquired another Hofner bass. Now, I am reading conflicting stories online, so I'm not sure which is the case at this point, but either Hofner sent him the bass as a gift and as a thank you to, just say thank you to Paul for bringing so much recognition to the brand, or Paul actually ordered it himself because he wanted to have a backup. I'm not sure which of those is true. I've read conflicting things online. There's so much like folklore with this kind of stuff, <laughs> but basically, he got a new bass and this new bass replaced the first bass. So now we have two Hofner basses, the first one being referred to as the 1961 bass and the second bass being referred to as the 1963 bass. So the 1961 bass became the backup and the 1963 bass is what we see him play with the Beatles on their famous Ed Sullivan TV show appearance. The most telling difference between the two basses is the placement of the pickups. The first bass having two pickups unusually placed together and held in place by surrounding black plastic, whereas the new bass had the pickups placed apart, one close to the neck and one close to the bridge. In 1964, as you can imagine, the first bass was in desperate need of some TLC. It had been lugged all around the world at this point, hundreds of gigs and recording sessions, so it was taken in for some well-needed repairs. The pickup surrounds had been replaced since they were actually broken, and it got a complete repaint and refinish. After this time, as the Beatles career progresses through the 60s, Paul also uses other basses, including a Rickenbacker and a Fender Jazz. The 61 Hofner bass would show up again towards the end of the 60s, around 1968 for filming the promo of Revolution and also the filming of the Get Back documentary around 1969. The bass can be seen at the beginning, but not at the end for their famous rooftop performance. Paul McCartney is actually playing the second 63 bass there. Since this all happened in 1969, it is widely speculated that the base was stolen in 1969, since that is the last time that it was seen by the public. However, through the launch of the Lost Base project, it is now confirmed that the base was actually stolen in 1972. The Lost Base project is a website and a search campaign launched by a man named Nick Wass, a former marketing manager, guitar developer, and semi-retired consultant for Hofner set up the Lost Bass project in an attempt to find out what might have happened to Paul McCartney's bass all those years ago and possibly locate it based on leads submitted to the website. When journalists Scott and Naomi Jones joined the investigation team, that is when things really started to ramp up. 
So according to the website, the lost base found, breaking news, missing for 51 years, we are thrilled to tell you that Paul McCartney's first Hofner base has been found and reunited with Paul. This is the news you have all been waiting so patiently for. Finally, after so much searching and investigation, we have Paul's lost base back with him. Can you imagine how excited Paul was when he heard the news? The base is complete and it's still with its original case. It will need some repairs to make it playable again, but a team of professionals can easily carry these out. The search began in 2018, but received no really useful leads for some time. It was only when Scott and Naomi Jones joined the search in May 23 that things really started to move forward. Following worldwide coverage by the press and media of the search, the first useful leads were received. Acting on these, the team could begin to pinpoint exactly what happened to the stolen base. We received over 100 leads and suggestions about the lost base, plus over 600 people contacted us offering their help. Wow, we were taken aback at the response. We received information about the actual theft that it had been stolen from the back of a three-ton van during the night of October 10th, 1972 in the Notting Hill area of London. This was the breakthrough we needed. We quickly realized that this information corresponded exactly with the story we had received in an email about the base being stolen. With some detective work, we were able to discover exactly who had stolen the base. Further to this, we gained information about what the thief did with the base. They sold it to Ronald Guest, the landlord of the Admiral Blake pub in Ladbroke Grove, London. Looking into old records, Records, we established the entire family history from 1972 to the present day. We suspected that the last base had probably stayed in the same family ever since it was purchased by Ronald Guest. On September 2nd, 2023, we wrote an article for the Sunday Telegraph newspaper outlining the search and who was on the team. We didn't expect it to go very far, but it caught the imagination of thousands of people. Within a week, it was in newspapers all over the world. We were asked to do numerous interviews and appear on several television news broadcasts. As a result of the publicity, someone living in a terraced house in Hastings on the south coast of England contacted Paul McCartney's company and then returned the base to them. The search was over. Paul had his stolen base back at last. The pictures you see here on this page are the base exactly as it was when it was returned to Paul McCartney. It has some damage, but it will be repaired and made playable again. And yes, the bridge is not where it should be. We are extremely proud that we played a major part in finding the lost base. It has been a dream since 2018 that it could be done. Despite many telling us that it was lost forever or destroyed, we persisted until it was back where it belonged. We want to thank everyone who helped with the search, all those who sent us leads and ideas, and many who just wanted to lend their support to us. Thank you all so very much, very much indeed. We did it. We did it! On February 14th, 2024, film student Rory Guest posted a photo of himself with that very base on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. I don't spend a lot of time on Twitter, I'll admit, but I did go and have a look at his account and check out a few of the posts. I noticed on February 13th that he also posted a picture, a couple of pictures of the base saying, to my friends and family, I inherited this item which has been returned to Paul McCartney, share the news. No German castles no wild crazy stories of it being hidden away in a castle in Canada or in some private collection owned by daddy big bucks who has only shown it to his most trusted friends. It was in somebody's attic gathering dust in East Sussex. It has also been authenticated by Hofner and Paul McCartney. There is actually a statement on Paul McCartney's website as well. paulmccartney.com, statement on Hofner base on February 14th. Following the launch of last year's Lost Base project, Paul's 1961 Hofner 501 bass guitar, which was stolen in 1972, has been returned. The guitar has been authenticated by Hofner and Paul is incredibly grateful to all those involved. So we know that it's legit and we know that Paul is grateful. I waited about a week to film this video, mostly because I wanted to take the time to research everything properly since there is a lot of details, there's a lot of history, a lot of folklore, a lot of stories about the early Beatles. So I did want to do the proper research to do my best to try and get all the information accurate in my videos. There was a lot of conflicting information, so I did want to look into all of the details and just make sure I got everything right. I kind of love the idea of when I make a video like this where it's about a specific topic that kind of involves maybe a bit of history or somebody else's work. I just love the idea of whether somebody knows something about the subject already or maybe they've clicked on my video and they have no idea. I love the idea of that person then knowing everything they need to know about this subject and it's accurate and they can, you know, carry that in, that knowledge with them. 
I don't know if that's wishful thinking, but I do really try my best to get all of this stuff right. So that's why I didn't film this video immediately. I did put a little bit of extra time. I was also secretly hoping that by now there would be something online, whether it's a photo or gosh, even a video of Paul playing the last bass. Um, so far at the point of filming this, about a week since the news has broke, there's not been anything online just yet. I was kind of hoping if I held off that there could be something I could include in this video to kind of show Paul with the bass. How cool would it be to actually see him with it? Maybe that's wishful thinking. I don't know. I, for one, would love to see a video of him playing it, but you know, maybe that's selfish. He doesn't really owe us anything. I just know how amazing would that be to witness. It could be just a fantasy. Also, the family at this point haven't released any statement other than Rory Guest's Twitter posts. They just said that they will say something in due course. And also looking at Rory's Twitter account, the most recent thing he's posted that was posted on February 18th and it's pinned as of recent, the Trace the Bass project, which is another project separate to the long lost the long lost base separate to the lost base project but the trace the base project has tried to jump in on the recent news when in truth the project nor people involved had nothing to do with finding and returning the famous Hofner the true story shall be told in time for now I ask patience that's interesting it sounds like they're being hounded by media to speak on what's happened um, and it sounds like they're just maybe not ready or I don't know they're just a normal family it sounds like and it's, I'm sure all this press is quite overwhelming so I don't know I suppose that must be hard to deal with when when you're not used to that I, I, I wouldn't yeah I don't know how I'd feel about that but yeah clearly they're being hounded and they're requesting to kind of be left alone um, also that's weird about the other base trace the bass sounding like they're trying to take some credit that's kind of that's kind of sketch but what a trip it must be for Paul McCartney to be reunited with something so special from all those years ago it's an important piece of music history the Hofner bass is Paul McCartney his fame with the Beatles made Hofner a globally recognized brand and when you spot one of these bases whether you realize it or not I think it's safe to say that most of us just think of Paul McCartney at least I do whenever I look at that base as I said at the beginning of this video I think all of us assumed that the chances of seeing this base again were slim I kind of love this story because the instruments we play each one has a story. I recently started a short series on this channel called Meet My Guitars, where I talk about all of my guitars individually. I talk a little bit about the hardware and the features of the instrument, but I also talk about how long I've had it and how I feel about it. As you know, as much as I can fit into 60 seconds for a YouTube short. It's just funny to me that this whole thing happened while I was very much in the headspace of thinking about, you know, what my instruments mean to me and having to like put that in words for a video. It made me really appreciate the ones I have. It made me miss my guitars back in Ireland. And I also imagined if I was Paul McCartney right now making this series, I know that's a stretch. <laughs> I don't think Paul McCartney needs to try and grow on YouTube. <laughs> I imagine myself telling this story of a bass I bought over 50 years ago in Germany when my band was first taking off. And then years later, it was stolen out of the back of a van. I thought I would never see it again. And then somebody, from the company that made the guitar started an online search campaign and the bass ended up finding its way back to me. Just an amazing story. Every instrument that we own or have previously owned has a story. Whether we love the instrument or not, maybe we didn't like it so much and we sold it on, but they all have a story. And if you're anything like me, you do get attached. I know they're just material things, they're just items, but I think when you're a musician, you do get attached to your instruments. Sometimes it's nice to think back on how long you've had it, where you got it, how you got it. It might represent a point in time for you, like maybe you made something that you're really proud of with that instrument, or it reminds you of a certain time in the past. Maybe you recorded an album that turned out to be really great, or maybe you recorded your first album, or anything that you're just really proud of. Maybe it was the instrument that you first learned on, or it was the guitar you were practicing on where you finally cracked that solo that you just couldn't get for a long time, but it's something you've always wanted to play. Maybe the instrument got you through a hard time. It was the hobby that you threw yourself into when you were going through something difficult in your life. Yes, they're the tools that get what's in your head out and into the world for other people to consume, 
but they're also so much more than that. They really can feel like a part of us. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm going through something, my guitar is the friend that I can turn to to release my emotions and help me calm down. Now, I can't speak for Paul McCartney. I don't know if it runs that deep for him, but I'm sure he was relieved and delighted to be reunited with an old friend. One that I'm sure he thought he'd never see again. A friend that reminded him of the early days of the biggest band in the world. That must have brought back a lot of memories. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you watched it all the way through, I really do appreciate it. Also leave me a comment. Are you surprised by this story or are you an eternal optimist and you thought for sure that it would just turn up someday? Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Also make sure that you hit the notification bell as well so that you don't miss when I post videos, my cover songs, my vlogs, my guitar shorts, my live streams every week. Just make sure you hit the bell so that you don't miss out. There are also some links in the description if you would like to support me further. Check out my Patreon. I also have a YouTube membership community and I have a merch store with lots of Irish and music inspired designs. If you do decide to be a member or a Patreon supporter, you will get access to behind the scenes vlogs. You are also welcome to join a monthly members only live stream and you get your name in the credits of my videos as well, just as a thank you. So if you would like to join the community or buy merch, everything is linked in the description. I really do appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will see you very soon. Bye. I don't play bass, just for the record. I don't really play bass that much, to be honest. I'm more of a guitar player who plays bass, so a lot of you will know what that means. <laughs> if ever a guitar player says to you that they play a little bit of bass, that's exactly what I am. Not a bass player by any means. I kind of wish I was, but uh, yeah, if I want to do a cover song and I feel like learning the bass line and it's gonna help it sound better, then I'll do it. But other than that, yeah, just a just a casual, casual bass learner. <laughs> I kind of refer to it as Paul. <laughs> Paul's its unofficial nickname, so yeah, I love it. It's nice to look at. Reminds me of the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs>